episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Good morning, brother. Good morning. How are you? Good, man. What's going on? Uh, I just, I got a mixed time, so I literally just got up. Um, <laughs> Sorry, bro. I know it's early. It's good to see you. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, good, man. Yeah, sorry to get you up so early. Not, not at all. Not at all. Where are you calling in from? Uh, Goldie. Gold Coast, brother. Beauty. Good stuff. Yeah. What about you? I'm the Central Coast at the moment. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm just north of Sydney. Getting ready for the weekend, man. Yeah, ready, steady. Yeah, yeah. What's that guitar you play in the background? Uh, that's actually Vince Neil's guitar. I mean, well, it's it's. I, I did a show about the Motley Crue, and uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's one of the guitars that we use. Well, it's the main guitar that I used in the show. Um, so Dude, then, that's awesome. Uh, that's a speed skating uh suit that i've got for another film that i'm working on at the moment i uh, can't really talk too much about it but it's uh, for it's a speed skating suit <laughs> oh, that's felt, awesome. it, it is what I, i'm i'm pretty unprepared this morning but i got shit everywhere <laughs> no no that's no, like me man as you can see i got shit everywhere but, you this know. is where everything gets dumped <laughs> yeah but yours is cool what have you got what's this you got, oh. you got music you got bands you, you got figurines Nerdy. <laughs> in everything love it. yeah love it yeah 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 well then thanks for joining us on the show today man it's uh it's definitely awesome to have you uh join us yep nice and early <laughs> thanks for having me man yeah man, yeah well of course you're hitting uh supernova comic con and gaming on the weekend and it's going to be one hell of a uh, fun time uh, is this your first supernova it is, yes. Um, fresh, fresh off the boat with this one. I have no idea what to expect. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. Have you done other cons before? You know, I've, d- I've been to San Diego Comic Con and New York Comic Con, but I, yeah, n- I've never done anything in Australia. So I'm, um, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm, st- I'm still a bit of a fish out of water with this. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, what what their experiences here and the crowds and so, yeah i don't know i'm looking forward to the whole thing well i think you you'd be surprised that the different fans wanted to meet you because you've got you know your doctor who fans you got like your, mm-hmm. your motley crew fans you know mm-hmm. um you know kane obviously you're part of canine so the whovians i think that's what they call them yes yes and they go deep you know okay. <laughs> so you'll be doing man they're crazy yeah the whovians yeah, so I, I mean, we only did one season of that, so I, I sort of, I guess, and, and we're Australian, so it's a little bit, you know, I, I can't imagine what it's like in the UK. I imagine there's a, a big crowd over there of Who fans. Um, and yeah. We are Who, but we're sort of tangent, you know, we're next door. Yeah. Well, man, they're crazy for it. You go there and they, they are nuts for the Who stuff. So I think yeah. that's going be one that'll probably take you by surprise, even though for one season it's a deep cut. I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's exciting. I mean, that was really one of my first shows, so that'll be cool. Yeah? How long ago was that? I mean, I was, yeah, oof, that's 14 years. Thereabouts. Yeah, dude. Yeah, time yeah. flies, eh? <laughs> Time flies. Time flies. So, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the to the weekend and, yeah, and get, getting to see, you know, meet everybody. Got some other friends going. Aaron Glenn Ames got a, a panel. Yeah. Done Snowpiercer and just a few other friends that are going to be there that I haven't seen for a while. So I'm looking forward to seeing them and yeah, and then the whole enchilada. Hey, enchiladas are good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, <laughs> you've had such an incredible career already. I mean, portraying not only fictional characters, but you know, real people as well, like Vince Neil and Harvey Oswald and, and now Jesse. Yeah. Um, how, how do you, prep for those sort of things being that they're real people is that more difficult than fictional characters uh yes and no i mean with a lot of those guys they're not around anymore a few of those guys are not around anymore so it's a bit different um i so you you i guess you know i played characters that are still around now yes. uh i played stephen lee 
an escape from Pretoria, uh, which is sort of an apartheid story. And, you know, he's still around. And, and so it, there's a whole different level of interaction going on. Vince Neil's still around. So you can, mm. you know, sometimes, I mean, I didn't really converse too much with Vince uh, prior to shooting because I sort of wanted to keep that, as an interpretation of him, I had done my own research on him and, uh, you know, I kind of wanted as a, my impression, my experience of him. And, uh, and then, uh, so I had phone calls, you know, some phone calls with him and then I met him afterwards, but then with Stephen Lee, uh, it was different. I, I had quite long chats about his experiences in Africa. And, uh, but then with, when you've got other people like Lee Harvey Oswald or Jesse Evans, they're not around anymore. Mm. Uh, so, you know, with Lee, there's quite a lot of online information. Uh, so you can do a fair bit of research on him. Uh, not many videos, but there's enough for you to get a handle on, you know, his very particular way of holding himself, of speaking, of delivery, of, of just his character, really. Um, so you can get a, a pretty good sense of, of the person from that. And then there's a lot of books about him and uh, everything that happened. And then with uh, Jesse, it was it was the opposite of all of them. Uh, he, he's more of an enigma. Um, he's this guy who was like a meteor that soared through into New Mexico in you know the 1860s, 1870s. Um, he he was central to bringing Billy into the world of being an outlaw, bringing Billy into the Lincoln County War, which is the thing that made Billy famous, and and he was central to the war itself in Lincoln um, command, you know, directing and being strategic in how, how they approach the, the, the fights, the battles. Um, you know, he's the leader of the seven rivers gang and uh, you know, he's so central to a lot of very important moments. And he was, you know, the newspaper, he, he was one of the most infamous people in New Mexico at that period. Yeah. Um, he was a real trouble um he, he was as as the newspapers would say he was more more of a, a tr more trouble on the local populace than the war raiding parties of the apaches and and they were quite bad at that period of time so but then he he just you have this sort of meteor that flew into new mexico and then he just walks out of history book the history books he just disappears He's a really interesting figure. He could have gone on. This is a hit, essentially his high point of his career yeah. as a, an outlaw, you know, very successful, making lots of money, lots of friends in high places. And, um, you know, he got put in prison and then he was there for a year. And he, then one day he climbed the fence and we have no idea what happened to him. He just walks out of the history books. So I think he's a quite an interesting, enigmatic figure. Uh, he's, when you do the research on him, there's, there's only two biographies on him. One is purely primary source material. So it's all newspaper clippings from the period and that's it. Uh, so that that's very limited in what you learn, but it's still primary source. So you get an, a sense of it. And then the other one is a short book that has a bit more information, a bit more anecdotal information uh, and, and a bit more on his life and family and, you know, things like he, he, he was, uh, arrested with his family when he was 17. Like the first thing you hear about Jesse Evans, he was arrested for counterfeiting money. So he was a criminal in the very first pages of history that he's accounted for. So, um, but it's, it, there's not much on him. You know, yeah. I had to read dozens of Billy the Kid books to, you know, you read Pat Garrett's account of Billy and it's this flowery romantic version of the old West. And you get, you know, half a chapter on, Billy and Jesse's exploits. Um, and so I had to do that the whole way through, just read a lot of material. So I, I learned a lot about Billy the Kid and, and I also learned a lot about the Lincoln County War, and which was kind of great in the end. I mean, I, I, I found it fascinating. It's a fascinating part of history and it's a fascinating war, the bureaucracy and the politics surrounding the whole thing. Um, it's it's one of those ones where you, you start to dig into the, the history of it all. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I remember thinking, like, I can't believe this hasn't been made into a, a series yet. It is literally perfectly written for it. You've got all of the intrigue, the characters, the plots, the corruption. You've got everything you could ever want just laid out for you, uh, you know, in his, historical, you know, in a historical form. So Michael's taken that and run with it. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, 
that that's basically it. Like just trying to piece together history for for Jesse. And then the other the other joy about it with characters like that, him Lee, is they're not around, <laughs> so nobody really knows very much about them. So you get to like, especially for Jesse, it was. Uh, I mean, I was able to really just do. Uh, it was like he wasn't a real person, basically. Yeah, yeah. See, that's you know, cool. I got to use a lot of imagination and, and creative license and s- sort of find him. I mean, the, the the main things I knew was that he was a leader and he was a leader in every aspect of his life. Um, like very early on, he's, he's a foreman for what, what a man called the cattle king of America, like John Chisholm. He was a huge cattle baron and, uh, you know, and he was the guy running operations under him. That's the first job that we hear about him. And that's, that's where they believe him and Billy might have met. But, um, you know, he's, he was always put in positions of power. So you just know that this guy's a leader. And he's also putting himself in the centerpiece. Like he's the centerpiece of all of these mm. big moments throughout history. So that's a certain type of, you know, there's an agenda that is a, a, a reason. He's not just accidentally happening on these things. He's, he's putting himself into these situations. So, you know, he's, he's, he was in, in all the, the newspaper clippings, he's very bombastic and big and uh, kind of over the top, um, but charming as well. Like, you know, he's, you know, you don't want to get on the wrong side of Jesse, but he's also <laughs> really charming. And, and int- he's just an interesting character in how they've color- like drawn him throughout the history, throughout history. So, yeah, he's really fun in that. You just take that and go, okay, where, how can I embellish on this or run with this? See, that's the cool thing about it, being able to run like that, because, you know, they made the Titanic movie, you know, with James Cameron, and there's, you know, sometimes you read stories about how people go, that person was not like that at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, nobody can say that with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, man, I tell you what, I, I'm driving to work and back. I see posters yeah. for Billy the Kid everywhere and every bus stop dude like it's like bang mm-hmm. bang, bang it's mm-hmm. massive there's a massive That's screen great. down here um where I, you know go do deliveries and stuff man and it's huge and this big massive billy the key poster this thing is just blowing up you know it must be it's, really it's amazing cool. i was watching the origin night last uh last week and we had we kind of took a, it was tom cruise he had one one trailer for his film and then Billy the Kid the rest of the way. So it was, you know, it's, it's awesome to see. You know, it's nice nice to have a show that people are responding to. I mean, Man. it's, I had, I had the best time doing it. Uh, and it's, it's really nice when that, you know, you can see that sort of translating and people responding to it. And I think it's just going to get stronger as it goes on, hopefully. Um, you know, I, th- I think this, the stage is set for a very interesting series after this because a lot of the first season is setting up Billy and getting to know Billy, but now the, the, I guess the board set and uh, it's off to war we go. <laughs> Can't <laughs> wait, man. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, of course, yeah. as you can see here, I'm a metal dude. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course, oh, yes. uh, you know, you know, Motley Crue is, is, is a metal food group. As they mm-hmm. Play, mm-hmm. So, and playing Vince Neil, you, oh, man, you were incredible as, as oh, Vince. Thanks, man. man in the lead up to that, did you hang out with Vince and stuff and, and get to know him? And no, that's what I like. That's what I'm saying. I kind of didn't really get to know him on this one beforehand. I like, I had a, had a phone call with him and then that was really it at the start. I mean, we kept trying to get him down on set and he was, he was always flying somewhere. <laughs> so we couldn't nail him down. Um, the boys did Tommy and Nikki came down to set and we got to sort of play in front of them. And then we got to, you know, just quiz them on their lives and, we were trying to find out different, you know, just anecdotes that would sort of help us as a young, you know, the, a Motley Crue band uh, and, and we, things that we could just add into the story. Um, just like the little things, like they would do silly things like pre, pre-rituals pre called, you know, something like a, they, they'd call the five glugs where they'd glug five big glugs of Jack Daniels whiskey <laughs> before going on stage. Just little little details like that that nobody would probably ever notice or pick up on but that we could just put into the the story in the script and did you, yeah, so did i didn't you, i didn't get to meet him really until until i went and saw his show after we wrapped and uh and then went back to the green room and sort of had some very very nice things to say to me and um it was yeah it was quite it was quite an emotional 
you know, it's a very, it's a very emotional story for him to watch, um, obviously. And yeah, it was, it was quite powerful to go and just chat with him um, and, you know, sort of get to meet him for, for a second, especially after playing him for three months. Man, I've got to say though, as you said, it is quite an emotional story. I mean, mm. there's, you know, him losing his daughter. Yes. That was like, even, even watching it was kudos, to you. man. Brother, you you absolutely smashed it out of the park because that is such a hard thing to deal with, you know. And yeah, it's oh, awful. Just awful. and you portraying that on on screen. How how did you prep for that, knowing that it's such such a sensitive part of Vince's life? Um, I yeah, honestly, I don't know. It's it's uh, yeah, it's just very difficult. <laughs> it's just a very yeah, difficult yeah. one to approach. Yeah. Uh, you try and do it with as much respect as as you know how to so don't really know i can't yeah it's a hard one to talk about really um but yeah it was just it was, sorry <laughs> that's all right um, try, to, try to do it with as much sort of respect as as yeah. as is possible you know isn't it yeah it's, it's a it's a lot for him to deal with so yeah anyway you did not, not nice no not thank, at all but man, like you know you tackled that with so much respect and uh and like yeah, it was really really cool. But thank you very um, much. Yes. Did you and the other boys get up to some uh, no good though? I mean, if you're playing no not we did. crew, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, man, my liver <laughs> probably didn't forgive me for about a year. I guess it, it was like getting dropped into the center of the world's biggest party for three months. It was a uh, it was it was a wild time. It was good fun, but it was quite nuts. We were shooting in New Orleans, which is a very uh, apt town for that sort of environment it's yeah. it's got that you know the same sort of energy of the strip back then in the 80s you know it's just got a a dirty sort of brilliant vibe to the whole thing dirty drinking fun youthful culture down there it's a, it's a great place i love new orleans um and uh, yeah it was just perfect to, we, we sort of rebuilt the strip down there did you um you, you were singing in it too. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Dude, how'd you how'd you train? Were you a singer beforehand? Did how'd you? No, t- no. I you know, and I hurt my throat doing it. Um, I had had about three, four months beforehand um, to train and sort of get get to it. Mm. Um, and then yeah, at some point they you know that we got somebody else to also come in and help out and some of it's some of the tracks also vince i'm not sure if you can hear it but some of it's vince actually singing as well um but there's a it's a bit of a mix in that one uh just because i i sort of hurt my throat and then i mean i've just done another musical film and we got to you know we we recorded the, the crew on differently we recorded that on as we were going so we'd shoot the scene and and sing as we were going and then uh and then that that's sort of it and then recently i've done another film where we pre-recorded it and you essentially lip sync to your own stuff and i've said it's so much easier it's so much less stressful singing singing on set uh especially after having wild you know nights out is far is very very stressful oh my god it's stressful <laughs> i do so, the, i do the death metal thing dude so i know all about it and uh, you yeah, take yeah. years to train. Man. How, do you, how do you keep it going? That's, and that's 20 the... years I've been doing it. So you, you learn to, you know, the gears. But uh, man, it's uh, I, Vince Neal's stuff is pretty hard, dude. Some of that old stuff, like those notes, those real high stuff. Yeah. Also, well, I, I don't actually, you know, I hurt my throat. Like I, I, I don't have those notes anymore. I can't even, like, even if I trained really hard, I mm-hmm. could not get back to no- those notes now. I, I've sort of, I think I've, I think I've damaged it quite badly doing it, but um, you know, yeah, I think I'm still okay. <laughs> you sound all right. You sound Thanks, all right. Man. You can still it's talk this whole morning, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what else you got coming up, dude? I mean, I know you mentioned about the 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 suit in the background, but uh, is yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, well, you know, funnily enough, on the weekend we just released a, a film called Seriously Red. Yeah, uh, which is uh, a, a comedy starring myself and Rose Byrne and Bobby Cannavale and Crew Boylan. And it's, it's this story about a young woman who essentially leaves her nine to five job to become a Dolly Parton impersonator. And she falls in love with a Kenny Rogers impersonator, AKA me. 
which is the one I was just talking about, you know, singing for. And yeah, we, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we released that on the weekend at Sydney Film Festival. Um, we were just in Texas prior to that for South by Southwest. And it's been great. We've been getting an awesome reception for it. It's a, a very fun, very light, very Australian sort of film, very Australian sense of humor. Um, so I, yeah, I hope I hope people love it. It's 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 a good laugh. I saw uh, the, I'm I saw the trailer, good. and I was like, "That looks cool. I love yeah. Rose, I love Rosebank." So it's like, yeah, I didn't she, know she's, she she plays Elvis in it. She plays a uh, Elvis impersonator. <laughs> That's and she's hilarious. You'll ha- you hardly recognize her in it, but she's she's so funny in it. Oh man, I'll have to check that out. But uh, yeah, so, hey, so I play the world's best Kenny Rogers, basically. <laughs> Beard? It's very. It's a bit of a. a, 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 a it's a very different character from uh, from old Vince Neil. <laughs> my my guy. My guy basically believes that he's Kenny Rogers. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a bit cooked. Did you have the beard? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All the beard, of course. Yeah, nice. <laughs> of course, it's not Kenny without the beard. Yeah. Brother. Thank you so much for hanging on the show today. We'll have all the links down here in the show notes for Supernova on the weekend. Cool. Mate, hopefully we'll yeah. see you up here on the Gold Coast sometime. But uh, until yeah, then, yeah. keep kicking ass, bro. Awesome. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for having me on, man. It's nice to chat and go through all this stuff. Yeah, awesome, man. Have a good day, brother. Thank you. See you, mate. See you, man. Bye.